Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome back to the shop for episode 49 on Project Archie, where today we're cheating. This is a hack. This is an absolute hack because a, by the book, you're supposed to 3D print a part to do this. My 3D printers are unhappy and I, I would rather do this with something more reproducible. So what I got is you can go on McMaster Car and you can get that exact part. Okay, that's what you're looking for on McMaster Car. It's a M3 flat washer. They're nylon and they're within a reasonable spec on thickness. And I think, I think it does happen from time to time. It's like a headache with pictures. But I think that this is a easier way for people at home to be able to do this because not everybody has a 3D printer. And because repeatability is a good thing because adjustability is a good thing. So I'm going at this with washers. So if you're following along in the book and you're like, ah, you look really close in the book, you'll see that Mr. Annan at one point did this with washers because there's pictures of it in the book. So what I'm doing is making up stacks of these real, they're just super thin. Let's, let's see how thin they are. And this is of course gonna be a nominal dimension. There'll be some variability, but when you make something by the bajillions, they get pretty cool. Yeah, these are, these are about a millimeter thick. Hang on, it's not science unless we measure more than one. Yeah, so they're pretty close. So what I'm gonna do is make stacks of these. Now I've already done this once in rehearsal um, and I didn't have enough in my stack. So this gives me the opportunity to go back and it's like, all right, well that, and there is variability on the 84XL037 timing belt. There, there's gonna be a little variability. This does not have a lot of stretch to it at all. So my numbers might work for you, I don't know. But I'm gonna build it with my stack and the number of washers that I put in mine may be different than yours and that's okay. So you'll notice as we do this that I have this upside down. This will flip all the way around. You wanna move it slow because you're on, there's a gear drive there and if you just whip this around, you're gonna spin the motor weight. It's gonna be, just don't do that. Be gentle, be slow. So normally this is sitting like this and I'm just inverting it entirely around this way. You won't be able to go the other way. If, if you try to go forwards around, you're gonna trip the limit switch. That's the bar we installed. Now I have half a dozen washers in my stack, which is a lot. And you could probably do this if you wanted to be fussy about it and didn't want to resort to 3D printing. There's nothing wrong with 3D printing. It's just, I don't want to have to do that if I don't have to. Um, but you could probably do this with a nylon standoff or, or you could you know you could go metal if you want there's no reason not to i'm going nylon because it's easy um but if you if you go with a standoff you could get one that's a little bit longer than you need and you can experiment with pretty much any kind of washers as long as it'll you know be reasonably close to get your accurate thickness and measure that get it get it where you want it to be and then put in like a solid metal standoff and just file it down to the required thickness. For me, I'm going with six washers. I'm gonna measure this before I put it on. My stack thickness is a little over five millimeters, which seems like a lot if you go by the book, but when I put the belt on, I had half this many originally and the belt was super loose. So I'm, I'm going big. Now the screws here are, you're supposed to use M3 by 14 socket head cap screws. I'm not because M3 by 14 socket head cap screws are kind of a bear to find locally to me. And my kit didn't come with any. And, and I, I ordered the hardware kit from Mr. Ann and, and it didn't come with that exact screw, but it came with these M3 by 14, um, I don't know, pan head Phillips screws. And if that's the M3 by 14 screw I got, that's the, that's the M3 by 14 screw I'm gonna use. Um, so grab, you're gonna need the NEMA 11 J4 motor mount bracket. 
and you'll notice that one side of it has the, it looks like a reticle for an elite sniper rifle, and the other side just has the circle. The circle side goes to the machine. Now I'm going to put my screw through. I'm gonna put all four screws through. Let's see if we can do this like this, because when you're dealing with a washer stack, they're gonna to wanna to move around, especially nylon washers, they, they like to move. So I'm just gonna put all four screws through and make sure you have this facing the right direction. We're going, it should go with the star target headed that way. And if star target is a new word for you, welcome to the printing industry. If you look at your morning breakfast cereal box, you will see a shape that looks like a circle with a cross. That is a registration mark for when they printed whatever it is you're looking at. You, you will see these on everything. You'll see them on all kinds of packaging. If you uh, look for the little circle with a cross, there's other kinds, but that's probably the most common. It's called a star target and it's a registration mark so that when they print the different colors of ink on your package, they can make them all line up in the press. And making all of those images line up with each other is called setting registration. So, got those all in, that wasn't too bad. And we're gonna tighten them down. Not crazy tight, but nice and snug. Because this is nylon, so it will compress a little bit. Totally a good spot for blue Loctite. All right, that's it, we're mounted. So that concludes our J4 motor mount and episode 49. We're making real progress, we've got that sorted out, and when we come back in the next episode, we'll be working on the motor itself. You guys have fun, I'm Chris Bowden, and as always, I'll see you next time.